Welcome into Red Empress Tarot. I'm Patty. I'm an intuitive, a psychic healer, and a reader. I'm also a twin flame myself, and I'm here to read you a message for your twin flame journey. This particular reading is called the Twin Flame Love Story, and it is all about your divine counterpart. We're looking at energy, 3D factors, and people in their life, karmic situations, blocks, and lessons. Um, that's all in the main reading here. It's very specific and detailed. We ask specific questions and get specific answers. Um, there's a lot to it. It goes for a little while, but it is very worth the wait. At the end, we will get some letter initials and zodiac signs for some confirmation for you. And there's also an extended offer where we'll talk about their intentions, their actions towards you, and if there's a karmic person or a situation, as well as channeled messages from your person and advice from spirit. Okay, so this is a packed reading. Um, sit back grab some popcorn grab a <laughs> grab a drink you know a glass of water do something healthy for yourself and let's get into the reading um before i do start please make sure that you are following your intuition and your internal guidance whenever you listen to a collective reading like this one you want to make sure that whatever you're taking into yourself and um, making decisions off of or you're, you're using it in your process to make decisions that it fits your story okay that's really really important um, if you're newer to the twin flame journey and you're not very advanced yet in it you're just learning about it this might really help you understand where a twin flame connection can go if it's a more advanced reading or it could be an earlier stage reading and we don't know what we're gonna get yet okay so let's go ahead and get started um, Please subscribe to the channel if you're new. I would love to have you as part of the family here. All right. And welcome back to my subscribers. I love you guys. You know that. Um, I wouldn't have this channel without you. I wouldn't be here without you. I'm here to help you. And, you know, that's my mission work is to help other twin flames. It's, it's just part of the reason that I'm here on this planet. And um, I'm happy to be here and have this platform to be able to do it on. So um, if you share the video, more people will see it and I can help more people. And that's really my goal. It's not really about collecting subscribers, but it's about reaching as many people as this can help. So, all right. So um, we're looking at their general energy to start. So here's a card for their overall um, energy in life right now is the four of pentacles okay we're also going to get a card for their energy toward you in a moment but right now we're just going through our general headings here we're starting out with their energy in life right now is four of pentacles okay um, let's get one card for the 3d factors and people in their life a general overall kind of overarching card for the 3D factors and people that are affecting their life right now. One card for that. Once we pull all of these main heading cards, we're going to go through and clarify them very specifically. Okay, so 3D factors and people in their life, the world. Okay. Now, um, an overall card for the karmic situation, whatever karmic situation your person is dealing with. We've got the Eight of Wands. An overall card for any blocks between you and your person. An overall card for blocks between you and your person. Uh, that is the devil, okay? Some kind of toxicity there. And then an overall card for lessons um, that your person is dealing with, learning, needing to learn. An overall card for lessons. What are we clearing here? Two of Wands, okay. Let me flip these back around, okay. All right, so we're going to start over here with the overall card of the Four of Pentacles. 
This is their general energy just in their life right now. This is telling me that they're um, holding back and holding on. So they're trying to keep their world together. Okay, they're trying to keep it from falling apart. They could be dealing with some tower moments, some impending tower moments, things that might be coming up that they anticipate. Um, I feel like they're they're trying to hold on to their money as a general energy here, and they're just trying to hold on to their stability. Now the cat in this picture is looking out the window. And so I feel like um their intuition may just be waking up, like they're getting peaks of intuition which is a good thing. The door here behind them is barred though. It's like almost like they're trying to keep people out of their financial situation right now. Yeah, they're, they might be just trying to hold on to their stability in life. Let's get um, a card for their headspace and their general energy. What are they thinking about this? What are they thinking about? Just let's take up their headspace overall right now. What are they thinking? What are they thinking? Um, we've got justice in reverse. So there's been an injustice here. They're feeling like they're not receiving justice in something, and it might be financial in their overall energy. Let's get a card for their uh, heart space right now. What's taking up their heart space in general? What? Where is their heart at right now? Four of Cups. So um, it's a stubborn energy that they've been having. You know, someone's been locked out. Someone's been left outside trying to offer love, and they've just been not seeing it. And they're, I think they're understanding um, the stubbornness in their energy of late. And what's interesting is there's a fish. I've never really noticed this. I noticed different things in the cards, but there's a fish bowl on the shelf up behind this person. And the fish up there is kind of high and on a shelf. It's like they've locked themselves out of their own abundance in some way by locking love out of their life. And they're seeing that. It's like a theme for them right now. They're starting to really understand how living in their heart space is going to attract abundance in. And right now their abundance is up on a shelf, like, you know, almost this energy of this injustice and, you know, maybe losing financially or losing stability has something to do with their heart space and how they've been holding back um, in their heart space. It's actually affecting them in their tangible world. The keys are right on the wall, though. I mean, they could change it. All they have to do is stop looking at the empty cups in front of them and, you know, stop being so stubborn. And they could find a solution to this pretty easy. Okay. Let's look at their fears right now. What are their general fears in life? What are their general fears in life? What are their general fears? The moon. You know, it's the fear of the unknown. They don't know what's going to happen, and, and there's this feeling like, um, I don't have control. If I don't know what's happening, if I don't know what's coming up, I don't have control. And, you know, control is an illusion, right? We generally don't have control. But some people um, have such a need for it that it gives them anxiety if they don't have it, and if they don't know what's happening. You know, some people like predictability in life because they feel like it gives them control, but it's really actually a false sense of control. But your person, um, you know, the fears that they're working through right now and that they're dealing with in their life is really about fear of the unknown. You know, if I let go, if I lose my stability, what's going to happen? You know, if I, if I stop being stubborn and I let this person into my heart space, what's going to happen? It's that, you know, un unpredictability, unpredictability factor that's, that's scary. All right, tell me about your person's overall desires in life right now. What do they desire in their life? What are they desiring currently in their life? 
What is your person desiring overall? We're going to get to their energy toward you next. What are they desiring overall? Um, the Seven of Pentacles. So um, they want to plant seeds and they want to grow things. You know, they, they want what they have to grow right now in stability, their finances especially. The person is thinking a lot about finances these days, feeling like that's a really important um, element for them. So yeah, they're desiring and they're willing to put in the work and be patient to um, achieve it, but they want the seeds that they plant out there to grow. You know, if they're making an investment, they want a return on their investment and they're willing to be patient to have that. Um, if they're investing in a person, you know, they want, they want a return on the investment. They want to see a return on their investment is really what I'm getting in an ROI type situation here, return on investment. That's what they want most in life. Whatever they put their energy and their time and their stability into, they want to receive rewards from that. Okay. And that's pretty normal human emotion, right? I mean, that's most of us want a return on our investment. And that's um, a balanced, healthy way of looking at things. Okay. You don't pour yourself in, pour yourself in, pour yourself in and getting nothing out. Um, that's, that's not a good way to go about things. So um, what are they avoiding in their life in general right now? What are they avoiding? Tell me what they're avoiding. Oh, what are they avoiding? Um, the five of cups, they're avoiding disappointment. <laughs> you know, they're, they're avoiding um, putting in the investment and having nothing come of it, having all their cups spill over, especially emotionally. This is a person that fears um, pouring emotion into something and having it come to nothing and feeling like a schmuck. You know, they, they're, fear, they're fearing disappointment of emotional investment. They, they're avoiding that. So I feel like they're, they're not letting um, their counterpart in emotionally because they're very afraid of disappointment there. Um, what are they accepting, though? What are they accepting in their life? What are they beginning to accept, or what have they just accepted? What are they accepting? What are they accepting? Knight of Wands. Well, they're accepting that they need to take action if they want anything to happen. They can't just sit around and wait for things to happen. They're accepting that their fate is in their hands and they have the magic and they have the power. So I feel like your person is stepping into their power because it's a knight and not a king or the emperor. I feel like they're just stepping into their power and they're going to get more, more powerful as they go. But they're accepting that they have to take action to make change. Okay. All right. So let's look at their energy toward you. I'm going to set this deck aside and we'll use um, Tarot of Dreams. So let's look at their headspace. What are they thinking toward you? What are they thinking about you? Right? What are they thinking about you? That is too many. One card, please. What are they thinking? Okay, we get two. Um, we've got the Magician paired with the Three of Swords. So they're thinking that they can manifest a way out of um, some heartbreak situation with you. This person is thinking that they can manifest a, a, a change in a situation with you that's heartbreaking. They know that the pain is there. They, they're thinking about the pain with you. They're thinking about the pain points between you. And they're, they're thinking about how can I change it? How can I manifest change? How are they feeling when it comes to you? What's their heart space when it comes to you? The star, wish fulfillment, you are what they want. They're feeling like you are their person. And I, I, I genuinely feel like your person feels like karma is going to come around for you. Like, 
you know, you've done enough good, they're trying to do enough good that it is going to come around. So their manifestation is going to work in their heart space. Um, they're genuinely feeling like you are, you are it. You are, you are the it for them. You are the total wish fulfillment for them. And they feel like karma is going to come around and balance things out in their heart. They believe that in their heart. Um, let's see what their fears are about you. What are their fears regarding you? What are their fears regarding you? What are their fears regarding you? Palace of Coins. Uh, they, they fear that, I, that they might not be able to provide you the stable home that you want. And I think it has to do, going back to this overall energy, here in their energy is the Four of Coins, you know, holding on to money. And so this person feels like you deserve a palace. You know, they feel like you deserve a stable home. You know, whether it's, you know, the size of the home doesn't make any difference. But they feel like you deserve this beautiful, stable place to live. You deserve something equal to your, your value, which is... A palace you know and I think that their fear is you know can can we have this together can I make this happen you know your counterpart isn't the only one that needs to make that happen you make it happen together but they need to um, come out of the headspace where they're responsible for that solely responsible for that we work together as a team right um, what are their desires when it comes to you what do they desire when it comes to you what do they desire? What do they desire? Page of Swords. Well, they want to talk to you. They have a message that they need to give you. Even if it's a small message, they, they want to come forward and talk to you. I think they're sick of waiting around and watching. I think they want to actually deliver a message. And I think that would be enough to start. I mean, what do they want? They want the courage to just speak. They want the courage to speak to you about this, about this desire to, to have stability, about the fact that you are their wish fulfillment, about the fact that they want to manifest a, a change in the heartbreak situation. What are they avoiding when it comes to you? Let's see. Is there a card that just says you in here? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean <laughs> Literally, just the runner-chaser dynamic thing, it just makes sense. So, like, it could be me, too. Um, two of swords. So what are they avoiding? They're avoiding making a choice. You know, they're avoiding listening to, to their intuition that tells them to go ahead and go forward and speak. So even though they want to deliver this message, they have a message, they're like, I want to deliver it. Um, but they're avoiding actually making the choice, listening to their intuition that says, please speak to this person. What are they accepting when it comes to you right now? What are they accepting when it comes to you? Palace of Swords. Well, uh, they're accepting the fact that they... They basically cut off the home that you could have had together. I mean, they're, they're accepting the fact that the running energy and the being all up in their head, um, it basically took away the home that you could have made together before. It's almost like, you know, we got the palace of, of coins here, which is stability and palace of swords, which is, to me is like losing a home. You know, they've, they've lost, they lost a home with you. Some of these people might have been married to you. You know, maybe you did live with this person. Um, for those of you who have not lived with this person, and there was the potential that they could have, and they know that they muffed it up, basically. But in their, in their fears here, the palace, there's two palaces, and palaces don't come out that much, you know. To have two in the same little spread here. It's very significant. There's a lot about home here. I feel like this person feels like you're their home. And they messed it up. And they want to give you, they, they want to heal it. They want to bring it back. Um, but there is fear there about it. Um, what are they accepting when it comes to you? Oh, no, wait. That was their accepting card. Sorry. Okay, we got it. They're accepting that they messed it up. Okay. 
All right, let's go on to the 3D factors and people around them right now. We're not talking about you. We're talking about other people around them. Um, the overall card for 3D factors is the world. It's wrapping up cycles in their physical world right now, in their 3D world. They're wrapping up cycles. That is their overall energy, ending things. Ending things so they can have some new beginnings. And so... Um, their energy, all about the, the 3D, the things around them, the people around them, is about endings. So let's get a card for their family in the 3D, in their tangible world right now. Let's get a card that talks about their family. What's going on with their family? Knight of Swords. Okay, so they're communicating things to their family. They're actually coming forward to their family and telling them what's what in their life right now. I think they're speaking about their twin flame connection, if, even if they don't use that phrase. I think they're speaking about you. Um, and they're speaking about the endings that they want to put in place right now. So if they're in a karmic connection, they're speaking about the end of that. If they're changing jobs, they're speaking about the end of that. And, and they're talking about, I want to end these things so I can do something different because my life isn't the way I want it. I'm not as happy as I could be. And I want to work on myself and my happiness and my growth and my you know healing. So I think that they are telling their family at this time very directly. And I mean, they're not like hemming and hawing. There's no beating around the bush. They're really doing it. Um, let's tell me about ooh, their home. Holy cow. Okay, I got King of Wands and Queen of Swords in their home. Hold on, I just dropped some cards. It really wanted me to see that. Let me get these cards off the floor because I can't use them until I get them all. Okay. Hold on. Let me make sure I got every single one. All right. Okay. Make sure they're all face down. Okay. So, back to the cards that flew up face up when they exploded in my hand, which means this is really significant to look at. Um, in their home life, they are the King of Wands, and their counterpart is the Queen of Swords. So, basically your person is taking action. I mean, your person is not effing around. Um, in their home life, what, wherever they're living, they are um, not messing around with anybody and they're not letting anyone mess with them. The King of Wands, um, you don't want to fight with the King of Wands. You know, if, if someone tries to screw with the King of Wands, um, he's going to screw with them right back. You know, there's there's going to be a battle. So he's really in king energy in his house now, in his home, or she, okay? Take it as it resonates for you. We're all different. But um, the counterpart here in the home, whoever they're sharing a home with, if they're sharing, and I really do believe your person is sharing a home with someone, um, a queen of swords energy. So um, this person is not liking your person in the King of Wands energy and is probably cutting things off right now. So I feel like this person is like, I've had enough, done. So I feel like a separation, it's definitely not a match here. This is not a match pair. If your person is living with someone, if your person is not in a romantic situation with someone else, there's something else about their home life there's an energy in their home life of something getting cut off right now, something changing. There's a lot of clarity here, and there's a lot of action here. So your person's home life, whatever it is, is not stagnant, okay? Um, let's look at friends. Give me a card for your person's friends right now. Your person's friends right now. Person's mates, friends, homies. I don't know why I said homies. I don't say that word. Clearly, I don't say that word. Someone out there maybe does. Okay, your person's friends. Give me a card for your person's friends. Um, six of coins. Yeah, really getting balanced with friends. It could be that your person had a habit of giving or lending money, and they're getting balanced and starting to understand, like, where should I give it out and where should I not? Not overgiving, not overextending more than it c you can afford to lose. And my rule with lending, I, I rarely lend money, but um, 
if I do, I only lend as much as I can afford to absolutely lose with no expectation of getting it back. Um, it's nice if it comes back, but if I give more than I can afford to lose, then I'm a fool. I'm not doing the right things for my own life. You have to be a balance and do the right things for your own life. So um, your person may have had a habit with friends of overgiving, overspending, maybe like, you know, buying a round of drinks for everyone every time or buying dinner for everyone or, you know, if, if people were coming up short on rent, oh, no problem, you know, I'll help you out and, you know, not getting it back for months or, or longer or whatever. So um, there's definitely this feeling of your person getting balanced with friends, like having a more balanced attitude because they're holding the scale kind of away and they've got this little symbol in the hand that is not a pentacle. Instead of um, putting out a pentacle, they're putting out this little symbol. And it's like, here, I, I need to be balanced with you. It's an honesty about the need to be balanced. Nice energy. Um, what about work for your person? Give me a person, um, give me a card for work for your person, their energy about work. What's going on with work with them? going on with work ace of coins good new beginning they might have just gotten a new job a promotion or a raise something like that but financially they're doing great with work look at that and there's something new about it so your person could have changed locations um, positions companies there's been some kind of change with a new beginning, and it's giving them really nice financial stability here. There's a brand new start in financial stability when it comes to work. That's really nice. Maybe a project that they've been doing is paying off, and they're starting something new. Um, maybe a contract is renewing something. Okay? Really nice energy for your person financially for work. And, I mean, and it's good energy. It's like they're enjoying their work, too. They're feeling victorious about the work. Which is nice. And it's divinely guided too. You know, whatever's coming in for your person is karma coming around for them. It's good karma coming around. Um, the divine is guiding us with this big, um, the buck here, the deer with all the horns. That's the divine guiding it. Nice. Okay, we're going to look at the karmic situation that your person is dealing with. This could be a romantic karmic. Could be something completely different. Um, could be any situation where you need to learn some kind of lesson. You signed up before you got here into this lifetime and said, hey, I want to learn this. And now they're in the situation where they're learning it, right? They're in school for their thing. So um, we'll see what it is. Um, we're going to get a couple clarifiers for the karmic situation, and then we're going to ask a bunch of questions to get a lot of information. So our, our karmic situation is the Eight of Wands. This is an interesting Eight of Wands because the Eight of Wands is a lot of energy, but this is very chaotic energy. Look at the look on this person's face. All my wands up in the air and I'm so imbalanced and like I can't reach all my wands. I put all this energy up there and there's a cyclone, a tornado behind this person. Um, it's been a lot of chaotic energy for your person in this karmic situation. So, and it feels like they don't have control of it. Like they're trying to gain control of it. Their cat is in their arms here. So they're trying to hang on to their intuition. They're trying to tap into their intuition. It's like they're holding it close, trying to work through whatever this chaos is. Energetic chaos. So um, two clarifiers for that eight of wands. Tell me about the chaos. Tell me about this energy that's crazy for them right now. Tell me about that. Two clarifiers. Yep. There's one. Uh, the Emperor in reverse, feeling lack of control. Feeling like they don't have control. One more. Oh, the Moon in reverse. Okay. But they are starting to see the situation for what it is. Whatever situation that was hidden from them before is no longer hidden from them. So that's a really nice energy, even though they're feeling lack of control. And we see that in the chaos, right? That's just clarifying the chaos, the emperor in reverse. Um, the moon in reverse, it's like um, whatever was hidden has come to light. So they're actually seeing the chaos. It's not under the surface anymore, which is nice. Um, sometimes a lot happens under the surface and we bury our head in the sand and we don't want to see it. You know, we ostrich it. 
um, but your person is not doing that now. They're actually looking at it, even though they don't feel like they have control of it yet. Um, but the emperor being here means they want to get control of it. And I do see the person in this card like trying, like trying. I'm trying to get a handle on this. Even though they don't have it yet, they're, they're like working at it, I feel. Um, what's their headspace in this karmic situation right now? What is their headspace? What are they thinking about? Um, becoming independent from whatever it is. So whatever the situation is, they want full clear of it, whether it's a romantic person or whether it is a job or a family member. They want to be independent. They want to be financially stable from it. For one thing, it could be a job. Um, maybe it's an old job or an old contract, you know, because we're seeing something new here that's really good. So there's something here. If it's a romantic partner, um, they want financial control here because their, their romantic partner is out of control with the spending. I'm definitely getting that. If you know that's your situation, the romantic partner, or the karmic partner, I should say, it's a karmic situation, is out of control with spending, and they want free and clear of this person so they have control of their finances so they can hold on to. You know, that could be the overall energy over here with the Four of Pentacles trying so hard to hold on to finances. Um, tell me about their um, heart space in this karmic situation. How are they feeling? What are their emotions here? What are they feeling in this karmic situation? Ten of Cups. Let me get a clarifier on that. I mean, they have felt like this person would be their person. I mean, they felt like this person was going to give them all the happiness. You know, the problem with the Ten of Cups, what people don't really understand about it sometimes, is not like the Ten of Pentacles. So the Ten of Pentacles, you see them, sometimes you think they're kind of interchangeable, but they're not. Ten of Pentacles is stability and home and family. That's a long term, it's going to work out kind of thing. Ten of Cups is the opportunity to have full happiness. But it's an opportunity. Both people have to grab it and work on it to make it work. Both people have to really put in that effort. I mean, you have to put the effort into the Ten of Pentacles, but the, the Ten of Cups is more tenuous. It's like, I feel like I could have everything with you. I feel it, but it's not actually having it yet. So there is that. There, they have felt like this person could be their person. They could have everything with them, but like clarify this. So clarify the Ten of Cups because I need to understand what happened with this possibility with this chance here, with this karmic situation. Um, yeah, Eight of Swords. They, they feel stuck in it now. So what something they thought was going to be um, fruitful and give them everything they want ended up making them just feel stuck. Look at this naked person stuck in the bubble. Like, they feel bound to it, stuck and bound to it. It did not turn out to be what they thought, unfortunately. And they're feeling very stuck now. Where once they felt potential, now they just feel stuck. All right. Tell me about the challenges here. Give me a card for challenges in this current current challenges in this karmic situation. It could be things they've just cleared, are about to clear, are clearing now. Uh, it's too many cards. One card for the challenges in this karmic situation. One card for challenges in this karmic situation. Eight of Cups is, you know, um, walking away from this is really hard for them. I think it's because sometimes when you see potential in something, it's like you fall in love with the potential of someone or something. And when it doesn't happen, it's you keep thinking, but if I just wait it out, if I just put more energy in, if I put more time in, it's going to come around. And then it doesn't. And then you say it again. But if I've already invested so much, so let's keep trying. And I've already invested so much. It didn't happen. So there's, it's challenging for your person to take the steps to walk away from this. But with this Eight of Cups, I mean, look at all the cups here all lined up. There's no love here anymore. There's no love. I mean, your person needs to be taking the steps to walk up and out of this situation. But it's hard. They're having a hard time with it. Most of us have a hard time ending relationships where we've invested, you know, whether it's romantic or not. 
fears. What are their fears in this karmic situation? Current fears. Current fears in this karmic situation. Okay. Um, Hierophant in reverse. Maybe divorce. And that's paired with page of coins in reverse. I can't take that whole stack. So, um, I mean, they're, they're fearing um, uh, the ending of a commitment. And um, they're also fearing taking back the offer that they give this person. So if they are married to this person, you know, they're taking back that offer of being married to this person. Um, if they are engaged to this person, they're going to have to take that ring back. You know, this, the, they're really worried about the ending of this thing. It's going to be challenging. You know, the, the higher font here is faith. And it's almost like they're fearing that people around them will have lack of faith in, in them if they fail to. You know, they don't want to be seen as a quitter. All right. Tell me about your person's desires in this karmic situation. What do they want out of this right now? What do they want out of this situation? Right now, what do they want with this situation? Uh, hold on. Four of Swords. They want some rest from it. Page of Wands. Um, seven of Swords. I got a world. I got to stop taking cards here. Um, this is what flipped up. So what do they want? Um, they want a respite from the connection, from the feeling stuck and bound. Um, with the Page of Wands, they want to be able to take some action. Um, but... With the Seven of Swords here, they kind of want to just sneak away from this. They don't even want to deal with it. And with the world here, they just want to wrap it up. It's like it's almost like this person wants to move out in the middle of the night and just be like, you know, or, you know, their, their person goes off to the, you know, friend's house for the evening and they pack their shit and go. You know, that's kind of what I'm feeling. It's not the best way to end something. But I'm also not here to judge anyone on why or what they're doing. But... This is the message I'm getting is they want to wrap something up and they want to do it by just getting out, getting out and like not telling them just leave. And I, I feel like their fear is to be seen as a faithless person by doing that, you know, going back to the fear here. They don't want people to look at them like um, they're a jerk, really, like, like they're not to be trusted. They're, they're worried about not being trusted anymore. They don't want to look bad. Okay. Um, let's look at um, what is your person avoiding in this karmic situation right now? What are, are they currently avoiding? Um, the Nine of Wands. Um, they're, they, I think they're avoiding any more battle. I don't think they want to fight anymore. That's probably one of the why they want to sneak away is they know it'll be a battle if they just say they're leaving. So your person is avoiding any more battles. They they have this ace one wand in their hand for a new beginning, and they've put eight wands down on each of the steps down the stairs back there. You know, and eight of wands is, you know, they put lots of energy <laughs> into the thought of leaving, and they're ready to leave, but um, they don't want to fight. I, would, I might avoid that too, you know, that's tough. What is your person accepting about this karmic situation right now? What is your person accept? I feel like we need a new deck. I'm sorry, one second. I'm going to use the after tarot. I was called to have this one. They're little cards. Sorry, I'll pull them up so you can see them. Um, what is your person accepting about the situation with the karmic right now? King of Pentacles. You know, they're accepting that they're financially responsible here, for one thing. Um, it's the after tarot, too. So we've got this bull coming through. I think that they're, <laughs> they are accepting that um, when they have this split, whatever this split is, whether it's a romantic person or family or job, they're going to lose finances because here's a bull coming through, um, goring their pentacle right there. You know, they're king of pentacles. They have plenty, but... 
leaving this karmic situation is going to be a real, um, it's going to cut a swath through their finances. So I think they've accepted that that's just true. Um, okay. All right. In the karmic situation, um, what progress have they made in this karmic situation? Tell me what progress they have made. What progress have they made? What progress have they made? The Hierophant, the Knight of Cups, Page of Cups. Can't take them all. I'm going to take the top two. Okay. So the Hierophant and the Knight of Cups. And this is the after tarot. So we're looking at the next scene after the traditional kind of rider weight tarot deck. And so the Hierophant here, um, I think your person has made a commitment to this person, but they're holding up the book showing you like, look, you promised this and you didn't deliver. Like this, for some people, this is really a marriage. Um, this karmic situation, but if not, it's some kind of commitment where this person had an agreement with someone and the Hierophant here is holding up the book showing you like, look, you promised this, but you didn't deliver. Like, I need to just show you. So this, your person, um, the progress they're making is they're accepting the fact that the other person didn't hold up their end or your person didn't hold up their end. This didn't work. Whatever this situation was, didn't work. They're accepting that. And with the Knight of Cups here, I mean, here they are drinking their own cup. It's like, I have to fill myself up with love here. I cannot just keep pouring love into an empty vessel that keeps draining and draining and draining me. I'm going to drink my own cup and fill myself up with self-love. And that's a really nice progress for your person to be making. Good job. All right. What work still needs to be done in this karmic situation? What work still needs to be done? What still needs to be cleared? What's the karma that still needs work? But we still need to clear. Page of Swords. Yeah, speaking your truth. Having a message and not telling it. So, you know, the thing that your person still needs to do is speak up. They have something to say and they're not saying it. They need to speak up. Okay. All right. Let's move on to blocks between you. So the blocks between you and your person, the overall card we have is the devil. It's temptation. I'm really getting temptation here more than I'm getting other kinds of toxicity. Because look at this devil. I mean, he's got this leer on his face and there's these two kids and he's holding an ice cream cone in front of one of them. And he's holding a bag and money in front of the other one. Both of them have these cats here that are trying to get their attention. Um, and your, your intuition is trying to tell you, don't listen to the devil there. You know, their intuition is both scratching at them. Don't listen to the devil there. Don't be tempted by money. Don't be tempted by sweets, right? So the, the block between you is both of you. Both of you having to understand that there are temptations that you have to get past. Like money isn't everything. Fun, the ice cream I'm equating with fun. Fun isn't everything. There's like other things in life that have to be attended to, to have a balanced, happy life. Um, let's go ahead and get uh, two clarifiers to go with this devil card um, to understand better the blocks here, the blocks here between you and your person. Um, the Page of Cups. Let me pull it up so you can see it. Fish is flipping out of the cup. And Queen of Swords in Reverse. So clarifying the devil, you know, we have this Page of Cups with the fish flipping out of the cup. It's like you know, one of one of the blocks here is going for stuff that tends to be that ends up being not fulfilling, going for something for how it looks, but then it's not really what you thought it was. So someone in the connection had that issue where they were going after stuff, um, giving their love out wherever, tempted, um, but then no love in this situation, the, the, the abundance abandons them from that cup. 
So someone has have, was having the tendency to just give their cup out wherever. Okay, not, not in a healthy place. And the Queen of Swords in reverse is telling me someone, the other person, was having a problem cutting off toxicity. So if you're Queen of Swords in reverse, you know, sometimes that means they're just incredibly nasty. And it could be that someone has, like, problems, you know, with, like, a fiery mouth where they're just, like, um, say really mean things. But at more, I get that someone has a problem cutting off things that are unhealthy. And so one person was, like, spreading the love around too much where, where there wasn't really love. And someone was having a problem cutting off toxic behavior from the other person, cutting this person out saying, okay, enough, I, my worth is more than this, and we need to cut this off, and I need to move forward with my life. And this feels like Divine Masculine, this feels like Divine Feminine. I don't know which you are. Most of you are Divine Feminines, but I'm not going to assume that you're only the ones watching this video. Okay. All right, so tell me, um, what is your person avoiding when it comes to this block right now? What is your person avoiding when it comes to this block? Um, conflict, okay, seven of wands, and it's, it's really a conflict card, a lot of times seven of wands is, is more like being defensive, and it could be that it's, it's defensiveness, and knight of cups, again, self-love, so, um, I feel like your person is avoiding, or let me just say it as Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine, you decide who's who. But the Divine Masculine is is um, avoiding coming out of defensive energy here. I think they've been very defensive about their behavior of going towards other options that failed and just weren't really good options to start with. They've been very defensive and they don't want to fight with you about it. You know, it's like they don't want an, an argument. Um, to happen and then the divine feminine over here who is afraid to cut stuff off you know what is she avoiding she's avoiding coming into full self-love here really drinking from her own cup with this knight of cups energy here what I was just talking about um, with the divine masculine side so I feel like divine feminine is actually avoiding true self-love in cutting this person off because it's not healthy you know the way that they're treating you is not healthy or have treated you i'm not saying they are currently um what are you accepting in in this situation sorry in the blocks did i pick up something i wasn't supposed to i don't think so okay what are you accepting in the blocks between you what are you guys starting to accept or clear you know what are you clearing? What's a better way to put it? What are you clearing in the block between you? What is being cleared? The chariot. Okay, so this chariot is interesting in the after tarot. So it's two sphinxes, which mean kind of no movement for me. It's the opposite of a regular chariot, but there are two female sphinxes. I don't know if they're always female, but they're so obviously female in this card with the breasts there. That um, I feel like it's letting the choice between two um, feminines block forward movement in the connection is what I feel here. So I feel that maybe on Divine Masculine's part, letting there be two choices in feminines, a light feminine and a dark feminine, and I'm not talking about skin tone. I don't categorize people that way. You know, the melanin in your skin has nothing to do with the quality of your heart, period. But um, I'm talking about light attributes and dark attributes, someone in a negative energy, someone in a positive energy. Um, I feel like what's being cleared here is maybe a karmic energy, karmic partner energy over here. Um, give me a one month outcome for this block that we're seeing um, for Divine Masculine. Um, Two of Pentacles. So in the next month, I think the Divine Masculine is going to be making a better choice. So with that, this Two of Pentacles particularly, um, one Pentacle is higher than the other. Okay. 
and the person is actually looking at the one on this side and getting ready to drop the other one. The shift has come in back here too. So I feel like there's going to be a major change here in the next month for Divine Masculine in this energy of going towards other options and being defensive about it. I think they're going to drop their defenses about it. Um, and for Divine Feminine, give me a one month outcome for Divine Feminine in this need to have more self-love and this need to cut off what doesn't serve and what isn't, um, what's good for you, you know, accepting less than you really deserve as a Divine Feminine as a good person and that's not being arrogant that's literally saying I'm a good person and I, I deserve to be treated kindly and, and well that's all it's not princess syndrome um, so a one month outcome for divine feminine we get judgment and knight of pentacles so really seeing it in the next month divine feminine is really really going to be seeing her worth and um, taking really healthy, um, active, if not slow, but well-intentioned active steps towards um, knowing her worth and acting upon what her worth is. It's a really nice energy. Okay. So last, let's look at lessons over here. Um, with the Ten of Wands, excuse me, the Two of Wands here is the overall card for lessons. That is the, uh, the inability to make a choice, you know, to understand what you're passionate about and make a choice, you know, understanding, whoops, sorry, understanding that you have the world in the palm of your hands and your world is as, as you create it. You create your world by your choices. And whether you think you have a choice or not, there's always a choice. There's always a choice. What is that movie with Michelle Pfeiffer? Dangerous Minds, remember that? Um, but I don't know if you guys have seen that movie. It's a, an older one. But she's, um, I think she's a Marine, and she's working as a teacher in um, a really underserved community where there's a lot of gang violence and stuff like that. And she talks about choice and the power to choose. And you always have the power to choose. And, you know, one of the kids says, well, what, you know, what if someone has a gun to my head? I don't have a choice then. And one of the other kids says, yes, you do. You can, you can choose to die crying or on your feet. You know, that kind of thing. And I'm, I'm not saying that that's a great choice to choose to die, but it's like there's always a choice, though. There's always some kind of choice. And the choices that you make affect your world. They create your world. And so one of the lessons, the big lesson here for both of the counterparts is that understanding the choices that you make whether it's choosing to go in a direction in love that's maybe not the healthiest or whether it's choosing not to cut off behavior that's not worthy of you, you create your world by your choice. That's the lesson here. Let's get two clarifiers to go with that. Oops, my card's all back. Oh, okay, I'm not going to worry about it. Two cards to go with that. Clarified by the King of Swords. And here is the counterpart to the Queen of Swords over here. You know, you, you are divine counterparts, and that's part of the lesson, understanding that you are divine counterparts. When we see um, a queen and king of swords on the board, even though you're misaligned right now, you know, the queen over here is upside down and in reverse, and the king is upright. Even though you're misaligned, you're still counterparts. That's part of the lesson, too. As well as the page of wands. And the page of wands is that feeling... Um, the inability to take action, like feeling like I'm not mature enough, I don't know enough, I, I'm not um, whatever enough to take action here. Because whatever you think, whatever's in your head, and whatever just comes out of your mouth isn't really what ends up affecting your life. It's what you do. It's the action. And when you're a page, you're a student, you don't feel like good enough or smart enough or strong enough, fast enough, whatever, um, to take real action. And so the lessons here we're seeing, you know, clarified, understanding you always have a choice, understanding that you are counterparts even when you're not aligned, and understanding that you need to take action. You don't need to just think about it. You don't need to just sit back and think about it. You actually have to do. It doesn't matter just what you feel in your heart. You know, of course your heart is important, but it's what you do that matters, that really genuinely affects 
your connections, your world. What are um, the counterparts here? What do they have in progress with the lessons? So we've got the Five of Swords. What progress are you making? I, I, I feel like both counterparts are learning that it winning isn't what matters. What matters is working together as a team. And so when you, when you do whatever you have to do to win at all costs, nobody wins, really. There's no winner here. Again, non-sum game. That was in another reading I just did. Um, no one wins when you do whatever you have to do to win. This is your counterpart. You're supposed to work as a team. you got to work to get aligned as a team. Um, what needs work here? So it's nice that you're both starting to understand that you have to work together. Working together is the way forward, not working against each other and, you know, trying to win. You're not supposed to try and win over each other when you're a team. You're not. You're supposed to work together. Not you versus me. It's you and me versus the problem. That's what really genuinely works. Okay, um, what needs work here? What still needs work in these lessons that we need to um, get down here between the counterparts? Um, Nine of Swords, the worry. You know, look at that big, giant, like, monster in the nightmares. You know, <clears throat> fear, fear is generally, genuinely, um, almost always unfounded. So I, I was talking about that in another reading recently, too. Um, I was <laughs> talking about how I'm afraid of sharks. And um, I love the ocean. I'm, I'm a huge beach person. I love to go snorkeling. I, I learned it a couple years ago, and I can hardly wait to go again. Uh, but I am very afraid of sharks. And, like, I've never learned to surf. I grew up on the ocean, but I never learned to surf because I'm afraid of sharks. And, you know, I hear people tell me all the time they're not quite as dangerous as you, if people make them out to be. And, if, you know, you may take precautions and... Um, you know, there's always risk in, in life and in the world. If you want to do something, go for it. But um, your fears, I mean, if I were to, like, research sharks and understand them, and I would probably not be so afraid of them as I am right now. And so I might go do the things I really want to do. I might go for it. And, you know, I probably will do that someday. But um, your fears here, I mean, you make these big monsters out of your fears. When they're generally not even real. That monster's not even real. It's just in his head. It's all those swords. Swords are headspace. That monster's in his head. And so the thing that both counterparts need to work on still is understanding that the fears you have about working things out and balancing with your person probably aren't even real. You need to have some honest communication with the swords here. Honest communication and not be afraid of what the other person's going to think of you or if, what the other person's going to do. You just have to be real. You have to work together. And if you work together, if you communicate together, you can dispel these fears that are just unfounded. Okay? Um, your counterparts, your souls are made of the same stuff. You want to help each other. You want to work together. You just have to learn to get over this desire to win. If you, if you desire to win, win together. All right. So this concludes this portion of um, the love story here, a Twins Point Flame love story. I will be doing an extended. In the extended, I'm asking what's still hidden from you? Um, what are your person's intentions toward you and toward the karmic individual or situation? What are your person's most likely actions toward you and toward the karmic situation or person? Um, we'll also, oh wait, we've got zodiacs and letter initials. I'm going to do that in a minute here. Um, in the extended, we'll be getting channel messages from your person and advice from spirit on what the best thing is to do right now in your path. So before we go, let's do zodiac and letter initials. Okay. So I'm just going to leave the cards out and we'll just put them on top. Okay. So I'm going to pull three zodiac signs. Um, these are just a little extra confirmation. They're not all going to resonate with everyone because it's collective reading, right? Okay. Um, for someone, it'll be an aha moment, but it's like one of your big three for you or your person. 
Um, and their big three, Sun, Moon, Rising, um, or Ascendant. Rising and Ascendant is the same. You could also count your Venus if you want. Um, Scorpio is the first one. Maybe I'll put it up here. Ah, I love Scorpio. There we go. The next one is Cancer. Water energy here. Lots of love in this situation. That's really nice. And Pisces. Oh, my God. Scorpio, Cancer, and Pisces. All the water signs are out. So if you or your person have a major placement in Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces, then this is likely for you. You could have more than one, too, with all three of those coming out. That's pretty cool. All right, initials. Now, this could be first name, last name, middle initial, nickname. Um, it could spell something out for you. It could be the name of someone that you're close to, like a child or a parent or a best friend. Just see what resonates for you. So the first thing we had out was an R. I'm going to put this guy over here. There we go. R. Okay. W. What reminds me of CDRWs. Remember CDRWs? Rewritable CDs. Um, M. RWM. Q. Like Queen. O. G. Excuse me, let me grab some water. Okay. X. Oh, excuse me, that's a Y, not an X. It's a Y. We almost, hey, we have orgy there. i got to spell it because I'm, again, I'm 12 years old sometimes. Okay. H. <laughs> All right. F. We really have it there. <laughs> not making it up. H, F, E. V, like Victor, V, or like victory, victory. Um, I'm not moving it anyway, I'm leaving it there. O again, so we have double O's here, so someone could have two O's in their name or double letters somewhere in their name. And then S, like Sam or Steve or Samantha or Sticky. Why am I getting it? Because <laughs> I have, okay, no, that's enough, Patty. Um, so let's see what, <laughs> what do we have? Oh my gosh, we have ooh too right here. Um, I'm gonna mix those up now because I can't, I can't be appropriate. Apparently, William. Someone's name could be William, Bill, something like that. Ref. Someone could be a referee or very into sports where there is a referee. S E V Sev. Um, I had an English teacher named Mr. Severson. So someone could have like an S E V in their name. Um, foggy, too. F-G-Y. Someone could live where it's very foggy. Um, I'm seeing the H-O-O-R. Hoorah. Um, marine. Someone could be a marine. Hoorah. I think that's correct. Um, fog again. I'm getting fog again. So it could be really foggy where someone lives. Smog, too. Smog is there as well. Someone could live in L.A. <laughs> um, isn't it sad that somewhere like that is known for just smog? Forest. Someone could live near the forest. Y.V. Someone could have a Slovakian name. I'm getting, like, Yannick or I don't know. Y.V., too. I don't know. Um, the Q made me think queen when I saw it. So someone could... Um, have a queen where you live in the world, maybe. You know what I found out the other day? I found out that the Queen of England is still the Queen of Canada. Did you know that? I did not know that. You learn something new all the time. Um, so maybe you live in Canada or England <laughs> or somewhere else with Queen. Um, QM, Queen Mary, um, that's a ship. Maybe someone has something to do with ships. Um, maybe you're a sailor or maybe you um, have a boat. You like boats? Maybe you're going on a cruise. Okay, I'm going to let you make of those letters what you will. Um, okay, now we're done with this message, and we'll go ahead and go over to the extended. Um, we're going to get really great stuff over there, too. It's also a packed reading. <laughs> um, if you want the extended, um, if this resonated for you and you feel like it would be helpful for you, 
Um, the link is in the description box. Just go to the title of this video, click the little arrow next to it, the description box pops open, and the link is there under Extended Reading, and it'll take you right there. They're always $5.55. And I think we've got it. I love you guys. Subscribe if you're new. I'd love to have you as part of the family here. I do special Twin Flame readings um, almost every week. I do also the mirror message, so go check those out if you're new as well. I love you guys. Um, look for some more pick-a-cards coming up, and I will see you next time.